Hey there, my friends. Long time no see. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Maybe that way you'll sometimes get notified when I break away from the dream realm to put up a video. I've got a pretty interesting one in store for you today, so I hope you enjoy. Talk to you later. Hey there, Mr. X. My name is Charlie. Before I begin, a little background info on myself. I'm a very religious person, but not in the typical sense. I happen to be what one might call an extreme polytheist. Basically, I believe in all known religions and I'm happy to worship any and all gods they contain. As you might imagine, I'm a longtime fan of the paranormal. I've always believed in such things, but never did I assume anything would cross my path in real life. To understand the first part of my story, you should know a little bit of the overall layout of my basement, where I live. Imagine you're looking down on a rectangular space. There's a line splitting it down the middle, long ways. One side is used as my dad's workshop, and the other is split in half again. One half of that being my room, and the other being a small living room area. There's a furnace located in the workshop, which will be very important later. So, this story takes place about eight years ago when I was still in high school. It was about 11 o'clock at night and there was a pretty bad storm churning outside. My cat, Smokey, always got scared when it stormed and would hide in certain places throughout the house. This one particular night, I hadn't seen him in a while and so I got a bit worried and went looking for him. One of his favorite hiding spots was under the furnace. I went downstairs and searched for about 20 minutes. I couldn't find him anywhere. I went back upstairs and looked around for another 10 minutes, but still no sign of Smokey. By that point, I had this sinking feeling in my stomach. I was bullied in school back then, and so Smokey was pretty much my only friend. He meant the world to me. I enlisted my mom to help in the search as I headed back down to the basement. As soon as I got down there, I began to hear weak meowing. I continue walking across, hoping that somehow... I missed him earlier. I get to the furnace and crouch down, in the shadowed gap underneath the machine. I could see the reflective glow of two eyes staring at me. The relief washed over me as I smiled and said, Hey buddy. I marched back to the stairs to tell my mom the good news, but as I drew in a deep breath to yell out to her, her voice rang out, saying she just found Smokey asleep behind a mattress upstairs another one of his hiding places. The breath I'd taken in suddenly felt stuck, like something was holding it inside me. It felt as if something was squeezing my throat, but somehow, from the inside instead of the outside. I know it doesn't make sense, but I can't think of any other way to describe it. My body was involuntarily tensed up as well. My legs turned into spaghetti, and suddenly I could barely stand. It was like getting your bell rung in a fight or crashing head-to-head -head full speed in a football game. I hobbled up the steps as fast as I could and pulled myself into the spare bedroom. I kept thinking how insanely fast he'd have to be to have gotten past me and climb up the stairs before I did somehow. I went upstairs and picked him up, and I noticed how warm the floor was where he had been laying. He had to have been there for at least a half an hour. Wondering if maybe we picked up another cat or something, I went back into the basement with a bowl of food. I spent several minutes looking around and calling out for whatever was down there, but nothing happened. I decided to leave the bowl of food out overnight, but the next morning, it was untouched. For some reason, surprisingly, not even Smokey got into it. About three months went by and I forgot about that strange incident. For the rest of the story, you kind of need to know how my room is set up. My bed was tucked into the far corner of my quarter of the basement. Right in front of my bed were my chair and gaming desk, and my door was just beyond that. The whole room was about 10 by 12 feet, which leaves only a small walkway along the other side of my bed and desk. I always kept my door slightly open so Smokey could come and go as he pleased. So one night I was up late playing a game. Halo, if memory serves. I always had the air conditioning cranked up to keep it cold. So it was about 1.30 or 2 in the morning. As I was in the middle of an online match, I noticed a long cat's tail come from the area near my door. 
waving around as it walked by. My eyes were glued to the screen, but I reached out to gently grab it as a sort of greeting. Obviously, I assumed it was my pal Smokey. As my hand touched it, I glanced over and saw the tail looked a lot thinner and darker than I was used to. Almost as if it wanted to stay out of sight, the tail sort of dipped down, and whatever it was connected to hopped up on the bed behind me. It seems crazy after the fact, but at the time, for some reason, I didn't think too much of it. After a while, I began to realize the room was a great deal colder than I usually kept it. It was the first and only time I was ever taken completely out of my gaming trance because of the temperature. I powered through the discomfort and finished the match, but then I looked around. My eyes landed on the door and for some reason, it was shut and locked. Seeing that made my heart sink. The frigid air in the room began to permeate the rest of my body. Everything wrong with the situation began to come to light in my mind. Smokey is a Persian and tabby mix. His tail is gray and white, and fluffy like a feather duster. The tail I saw and briefly felt was thin and bony, and almost black in color. Anxiety set in as I realized I didn't know what was in the room with me. Being an avid hunter, I know exactly what it feels like to be stared at by a predator. That was the feeling I got. Another thing I noticed was that all of my senses were somehow dulled. I had my headphones on, but the lobby music from the game I was playing was muffled and extremely low. The cold spreading throughout my body made my fingers numb to the point where it felt like they weren't even there. Despite the cold in my body, the basement air felt unusually neutral. I opened my mouth and it felt like I had a mouthful of ash. I tried swallowing, but I could not. The sensation of something watching me became so overwhelming I began searching the dark room in a panic, feeling certain that there was something right behind me, but when I turned around, nothing. I leapt out of my chair and raced out of the room. Smokey was poking his head through the banister as I scrambled to get upstairs. After that, I was jumpy for weeks. I felt like some kind of emotional time bomb, and I got set off so many times. I totally rearranged my room so that I couldn't see the door while watching TV. About five weeks went by, and that's when the last incident occurred. So like before, it was late, around midnight. I was laying in bed watching a movie when I heard a light scratching noise at my door. I paused the show, and a long, deep scratching noise came down the wall directly behind my head. It almost sounded like something was falling down and digging into the wall to stop itself. As I was taking it all in, I felt the area of my bed by my feet compress down, and my heart stopped. My mind went blank trying to comprehend what was going on as another invisible mass set itself down near my other leg. I was frozen in place as one of the weights shifted onto my hip. The other one moved over to my chest, standing over me. I could feel warm breath emanating from the darkness above me. I got the distinct feeling that something was waiting for me to make a move. A mistake. In my mind, I uttered a prayer. I don't even remember what I said. Moments later, I felt a rush of fresh air enter my lungs, and the presences were both gone. Over the years since those events, I've had a number of odd occurrences in my home. My friends and I, even my mother on one occasion, sometimes hear our names being called in familiar voices only to find out that the person whose voice it was never said a word. I also heard and felt that same scratching noise inside the wall, but this time it was under my bed. The last thing I'll share is this recurring nightmare I've been having for a long time now. I only mention it because I feel like it's connected to all this. I have nightmares often and they usually don't really shake me. This one, however, has an especially haunting feel about it. The dream always starts in a fog. I can barely make out anything past a hundred feet or so ahead of me. My feet feel warm and wet. I look down and notice I'm standing up to my shins in thick, dark blood. As I survey the area, I see dead trees collapsed everywhere like I'm in a swamp or something. A shape begins to rise out of the bloody marsh. A shockingly large head. It's vaguely shaped like that of an extremely oversized cat made of what seems to be flowing liquid blood. 
The feline head raises up, revealing a four-legged body that stands taller than me. The whole thing is somewhere between fluid and solid. There's really no way I can think to describe it more thoroughly, so I hope you get the gist. It has pointed ears and dark yellow eyes that peer through the streams of blood like lanterns. I can see sharp teeth inside the mouth and what appear to be long fangs protruding from its jaws. The snout is slightly longer than that of a normal cat. Its face is separated into sections or panels. If you've ever seen the Turian race from Mass Effect, you might know what I mean. The beast creeps its way out from the marsh and moves towards me. As it approaches, my arms spread wide open against my will. Even though by this point I know I'm dreaming, I still can't resist it. The cat bites down on my forearm with unbelievable force, destroying my flesh and bones with almost no effort. The sound of my bones cracking racks my ears like the breaking of a large tree branch in the woods. The monster devours my body one piece at a time. I watch in horror as it takes my other arm, my foot, my femur, each limb torn away with a nauseating series of snaps and twists. By the time I'm down to just a torso and head, and my mind has had enough, the beast looks me in the eyes. As I fade away and begin to wake up, it whispers, Don't leave me. I've been searching for years trying to connect the dots of these events, Mr. X. I haven't been able to figure out what's happening or why. If you have any ideas, please let me know. I'll be watching. Sincerely, Charlie. Hello there, my friends. I know it's been a while. It's always been a while, hasn't it? I'm a busy man, but I can't leave you hanging forever. I only hope that the real dreamers are here to listen whenever I finally poke my head out from the shadows like Charlie's ghostly cat. If you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you probably saw the uh, preview that I posted for the thumbnail that I drew for this video. And if you were watching during the video, in that specific scene, I actually played the speed drawing that I recorded on my iPad while I was drawing it. Hope you enjoyed that. Speaking of which, you know I have some thoughts on this story. However, I want to note that some of the incidents could easily be explained by very human elements like sleep paralysis or tricks of the mind. I don't want to get so far into the realm of fantasy that we can't separate it from the likely reality. I do need to do a better job of conveying that with these videos. I like to think most of us dreamers are humble enough to acknowledge the fact that although there is more to this existence than we realize, there are usually reasonable explanations for these kinds of events. That said, let's put our fantasy hats back on for a minute. The various encounters throughout this story seem to knit together to form an image of some sort. An idea of something trying to get the young man's attention. An entity that, perhaps, is in need of him somehow. I wanted to mention the bizarre set of reflective eyes he saw underneath the furnace. The phantom choking, physical effects, and mysterious feline presences throughout the house on different occasions. I think it's no coincidence that Smokey the Cat seems completely indifferent to all the craziness going on around him. Imagine an entity that literally feeds on human flesh in the dream realm. That would be a virtually unlimited source of energy and sustenance if there were ever some sort of thought form or entity capable of existing in that way. The monster commanding him not to leave, knowing the exact moment when Charlie would be waking up, was a haunting aspect of this, one of the most haunting parts in my opinion. I wonder if perhaps that's why the apparitions began showing up in the real world. Maybe it was tired of him leaving the dreams behind. And if all this happens to be true, I suspect Smokey may be in on it. This is exactly why I always try to tell people that no matter how much you love your cat, it probably would not lift a paw to help you even if you were being stalked and repeatedly eaten by a godlike entity. So, back to the skeptic side of things. The mind is a powerful tool. Whenever a story takes place late at night, or even more so when the subject is laying down to sleep, there's a strong possibility of sleep paralysis or hallucination playing a major role in whatever happens afterwards. 
I know from first-hand experience how hard it is to separate what you see in moments like that from reality. The reality that we all share, that is. Most of us, anyway. See how these things can get really muddy. The brain also has a knack for filling in details in our environments that it expects to be there, such as reflective eyes or meowing of a cat, coming from the area that you usually tend to see and hear that sort of thing. Still, the very fact that we cannot know for sure is what makes stories like these so much fun to discuss and analyze. I want to thank Charlie for sharing his story and you for listening. Now, I have a question for you. A couple of questions, actually. Have you ever seen a cat in your dreams? And what do you think it meant? And do you share the same distrust for cats as I do? Leave your two cents in a comment down below to keep the discussion going. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I would very much appreciate the love right now. By the way, mom's doing as good as she can do right now, trying to heal up a fractured vertebrae at the moment. Your concern and your words of encouragement are always appreciated. Until next time, my friends, take care. I'm Mr. X, and may your nights be full of dreams. Oh, and by the way, that cat god was pretty gooey, all dripping with blood. That would make a fantastic code word if you ask me. If you listened all the way to the end of this video, type gooey in your comment down below so I can see you.